The Nigerian police force over the years has been confronted with numerous challenges, some of which have been caused by inadequacy of operation facilities. Both federal and state governments have initiated several interventions to reposition the police force, but it's still confronted with avalanche of challenges. One of these critical shortcomings is the non-availability of this and accommodation for police officers in Nigeria. And now we're joined by telephone by Shegua Wosaya, human rights activist and convener, and SAS advocacy. Thank you, Shegua, for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me on your program. All right. Now, how would you want to react to this situation, the current situation of the Nigerian police and the accommodation um, brahaha? I didn't get that. I like, what is your reaction to the situation, the current situation of the Nigerian police, and given the, the myriads of the accommodation problem they seem to be facing? Well, um, it, has, it has always been the same, because the reason behind our advocacy is to ensure that the age-long issue of the culture of impunity and culture of neglect which has caused a lot of institutional gaps that is actually taking a toll on the society. So we're trying as much as possible to break those gaps through legislation. There's no way we can expect the police to be at their best when they don't have the resources to carry out their operations, when they don't even have accommodation, when their salaries are not stable, or even commensurable with the times that we live in, when they don't have a future, so to say. There's no pension, and the pension is not even reliable. And this is supposed to be a career, not just a, an enriching uh, platform, but a career through which they hope to grow in and be able to serve their nation. So these are some of the issues that shows incandescently that police are also a victim of the system. But this doesn't justify the actions that we're seeing out there, which is against the very same people who they are meant to serve and protect. So the, the bills that have been sponsored and facilitated will ensure that these problems that we're facing in terms of accommodation their, uh, their pensions, their salaries, their equipment, their operations and all will be solved. And I can categorically tell you that the Police Trust Fund Bill has been signed into law. We're just awaiting the president's uh, structure of the board that's going to execute this bill, this law, as it's but the police reform bill is presently being looked at at the House of Reps. So I'm sure very soon you're going to hear about the public hearing on that particular bill. Okay. Now, there, there's been a whole lot of clamor for the reformation of the Nigerian police force. I, I, want, to, I want to have you um, take your, to have your two cents on this, please. Can you take that to get it? The call for the reformation of the Nigerian police force. What, what is your reaction to that? The call? Yes, to reform the Nigerian police entirely. That has been what we have been pushing for a while. Okay. At least for three years now. So the reformation of the police will entail restructuring so many things. As you would know, that the current police system that we are running is still the constabulary, which means it is the Police Act of 1943 that we're still executing in 2020. So that is why it is necessary for a lot of things to be tweaked, for police to reflect the society that we currently live in. The way they are constituted, they are not designed to protect the people, but protect the leadership from those who are being led. And also the, the, the structure of recruitment 
is also skewed to favor the political interest. So at the end of the day, you realize that you have a police structure that does not serve the people, but only serves a certain percentage of the elite. But all this will be corrected with the new approach to policing through legislation that refocuses the police system to serve the people. All right, you just said true legislation. All of this will be corrected. I think a whole lot of Nigerians out there will be really interested to know how and what, what is in place to, to ensure that this, we see all of these ills and all of this um, being, being, being done rightly. Because um, there, there's also been arguments in the fact that we have policemen who still live in barracks and that for state policing to, to be very effective like we're clamoring for, the, the barracks is an old system that shouldn't exist any longer. Do you agree with that? Well, I, don't, I believe that state policing is a, is, is, a, is a necessary argument, but there must be a structure that supports that. Currently, we don't have a structure that supports state policing that will make it effective without a possible hijack by political interest. There must be a system or a structure in place that sees a policing system that reflect the current situation on ground in Nigeria. We can argue for community policing, which is not, or which is different from the approach of paying lip service to community policing in the minds of some people, which may have been interpreted as having a police officer who dwells in a community, who wears a certain uniform, and is loyal to community interests. We're still looking at the federal system and a police that is conscious of its environment enough to integrate itself with the society. That is exactly what you see in other crimes, where you see police engaging with the citizenry on multiple platforms outside criminal integration or criminal intervention where you have police officers going to schools to teach, where you have police officers guiding the public on what not to do and what to do, earning the trust of a society enough to get information from them, which can be processed into intelligence. Not just merely coming to the streets to accuse everybody of being criminals. So it is not about state policing where we don't even have the state managing their own resources. Without restructuring Nigeria, you cannot have a successful state police. What we can have is a restructured police system that is conscious of its environment and society enough to end the trust of the people. And that's what we should be working towards. For joining us this morning and for your contributions. And still with me in the studio is Dr. Emery and Agunwa. Let, let's talk about the state of the Nigerian police and state policing has been clamored for and also the welfare of Nigerian police. Um, it's, it's been a concern, this, the state, how deplorable the barracks where they leave. What, what are your take on this? Um, I think um, there are two different issues here. Okay. State police yeah. and the whole welfare thing about the, yes. the, the national police force. Okay, I think that, let's look at it tactically. That we have state police doesn't mean that we are expecting something better, okay? But that means we can ensure for direct security options. But we want options. something better. How Absolutely. do we ensure for something better with the Nigerian police? Okay, so Nigerian police needs to have. We need to have a total um, overhaul and reformation, okay, on the Nigerian police system. The way people are recruited, the processes, basically everything we use in the Nigerian police force is outdated. The, barrack, the barracks are not anything, nothing to write home about. Their welfare is not interesting. In fact, even the, 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 the agility of the police force can be questioned too because a lot of them have pot bellies. I mean, everything needs to be reviewed tactically, okay? And I'm saying if we can get proper information, the welfare system is bad. You see that if you get to the barracks, it's, it's, I can't even live there. I can't even visit anybody there. And these guys are the ones that are supposed to look out for lives on property, secure our lives on property, ensure that things are done well. So I think the call for reformation is, is um, overdue, yeah? And um, state policing is also ripe. 
we need to get states to get involved, direct security systems, okay? Because people around, they know how systems operate. No two states are the same. And we need to also ensure that people who run the states, okay, we must be ensure that we don't have political interference. Okay, because when we know that we have godfathers in this country, we can't, we can't overrule that, yeah, we can't take that one out. But we're saying, when we have state policing, we also need to ensure there's proper structure to ensure for accountability, that we, they don't turn out to be people's personal thoughts and people's personal errand boards. All right, Dr. Miriam Guma, thank you very much for your contribution.